In this video, we're going to focus on electroplating. So let's say if we connect a battery across two electrodes, here is the positive terminal of the battery, and this is the negative terminal of the battery, and we're going to use two copper electrodes. Now let's say we have an aqueous solution, and in a solution, there are copper ions, and let's say we have nickel ions and zinc ions. Electrons will flow from the anode to the cathode. So electrons will flow towards the positive terminal of the battery and leave the negative terminal of the battery. So on the right side, this is the anode. On the left side, this is the cathode. So oxidation occurs at the anode. So at the anode, copper metal will be oxidized. And so the copper 2 plus ions will enter the solution. Now what about at the cathode? Now at the cathode, copper can be reduced. And so this is the reduction reaction for copper. The cell potential is positive 0.34. Now cations, like this one, flow towards the cathode. So all of these cations will accelerate towards the cathode. Now here's the reduction potential for nickel. It's negative 0.23 volts. And the reduction potential for zinc is negative 0.76 volts. So which reaction will occur at the cathode? the reduction of copper, nickel, or zinc? Well, it's going to be the one that's most spontaneous. So the reduction of copper at the cathode is most likely to occur because it has the highest cell potential. So this process is more spontaneous than the other ones. Now, let's think about what's happening here. So as the electrons flow from the anode to the cathode. The copper atoms in this copper electrode are going to enter the solution. And so as they enter the solution, they're going to give up two electrons per copper atom. And so they enter the solution as the copper two plus ion. Now this ion is going to accelerate towards the cathode. And once it reaches the cathode, it's going to pick up two electrons per atom or per ion and become an atom. So it's going to deposit itself on the cathode. So the anode is losing mass. The quantity of copper is decreasing and the cathode is gaining mass. So the net effect is we're taking copper atoms from the anode and transferring it to the cathode. And so that's the basic idea behind electroplating. You can take the metal of one substance and deposit it on another substance. So let's say if the cathode was zinc instead of copper, we can deposit a thin film of copper on zinc. Now if you heat it, the copper atoms could actually diffuse into the zinc structure, and so you can get an alloy, which is known as brass. But under cooler temperatures, you can get a thin film of copper on the surface of a zinc electrode. Now, is it possible to quantify the mass of copper that can be plated onto this electrode? Now, the mass of copper that will deposit itself on the electrode is proportional to the current that flows in a circuit and also the time in which the current is flowing. One mole of copper has a mass of 63.55 grams based on a periodic table. And based on the reduction reaction of copper, we could say that when one mole of copper is deposited on the cathode, two moles of electrons flow through the circuit. 
and you need to know that one mole of electrons is equal to 96,485 coulombs, according to Faraday's constant. And one coulomb is equal to a current of one amp that flows for a time of one second. Charge is equal to current multiplied by time. So if you increase the current or the rate at which charge flows through the circuit, you can increase the rate at which mass is deposited on a cathode. And if you increase the time, you can increase the quantity of copper that is deposited on the cathode. So the mass of copper is based on the current in a circuit and how long that current has been flown in a circuit. And so using these quantities, you could figure out how many grams of copper have been deposited on a cathode or how many grams of copper was lost by the anode. Another way in which you can measure it is you can measure the initial mass of the anode and then after maybe five minutes of applying an electric current you can then measure the new mass of the anode. Did it increase or decrease? Now you have to make sure that the anode is completely dry, it doesn't have any water molecules on it. But by measuring the change in mass of the anode, and let's say if you know the time in which the electricity was applied, you can actually measure the current in the circuit. Or if you know the current and the time, you can calculate the mass that was transferred to the cathode or that was lost by the anode. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can relate the charge that flows in a circuit with the change in mass of these electrodes.